Do people often tell you that you talk too much? If so, you might be a verbal processor, in which case for you, ironically, interrupting might be a form of listening. So in this video, I'm going to share uh, three damaging messages that we often internalize around uh, talking too much. And finally, a, um, a positive way to understand what's actually going on so that you can embrace your identity in, instead of trying to, to hide it and suppress it in front of others. Welcome to Asperger's From The Inside. My name is Paul Mikolev and I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism. So make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. I thought it might be good to start with a quick story. Um, I have a friend of mine um, who constantly interrupts. Whenever you're sharing a story or telling us something, she will interrupt you while you're speaking. And for a long time, I got really frustrated with that because for me personally, when someone interrupts me, it, it, um, I lose my train of thought. But eventually we figured out that the reason that she talks over the top of me is because if she doesn't say the words out loud, basically repeat back mid sentence what I'm saying to her, then she won't remember what's been said. And by the time I get to the end of the sentence, she'll have forgotten the start of the sentence. So ironically, interrupting, speaking over the top of someone was actually her form of listening and staying engaged. And without doing that, then I'd be talking and I would feel great because I'd get to the end of my sentence, but actually what would happen is there'd be no meaningful communication exchange there. I would say what I want to say and it just would not land at all. So ironically, interrupting was a form of listening, a form of verbal processing where when you say something out loud, that is the easiest way for you to understand the information. So some of us uh, like reading and we read the information in our head and understand it. Some of us like listening for an, like an audiobook, for example, and I'll listen to information and understand it. Verbal processing is saying things out loud. And when you say it out loud, that is when your brain clicks about what this actually means and you start to understand it. So the first damaging message that we often hear around around this, um, and and I hear this a lot uh, from from members of the community. They'll say things like, "I feel like I'm messed up. I there's something wrong with me. I should be able to do this. Um, I'm I'm constantly trying to stay quiet and I can't do it. It's taking a huge amount of um, concentration and energy, and." there's something wrong with me. I'm messed up because I can't do what I think I should, should be able to do in this situation. And part of the, the way that we internalize that message is if people are constantly telling you, whoa, you're talking too much, stop talking, stop talking, talk less, talk less, talk less, then that is a pretty significant message to internalize, I need to talk less and I'm not okay if I talk too much. I'm going to drive people away if I talk too much. You know, no wonder that person left the conversation. You were talking their ear off. You need better social skills, right? It's, it's, it's internalizing the fault always on ourselves, thinking that I must be the problem because I'm the one with the problem of talking too much. So we want to, we're going to dispel all three of these things um, later on. So the, the, the second um, thing that we can internalize um, is around social anxiety and thinking that it's my job to get it right. If I've internalized the first message that there's something wrong with me, I'm the problem, then the next uh, message that I'll think naturally is it must be my job to get it right. And this can cause a huge amount of social anxiety. I'm about to go to a social gathering or a party or m talk to someone on the phone or meet a new client or anything where I'm engaging with someone I don't know for the first time. And I need to make sure that I don't slip up and talk too much and have this, have this negative impact. So what does social anxiety feel like? 
Um, some people have described it as like an elephant sitting on their chest. Some people, um, you know, so, so like it, it feels really hard to breathe. It's hard to think. It's hard to do things. It's concentrating. It's overwhelming. Um, ironically, it can be really hard to form any words and speak at all when, when you have a huge amount of social anxiety. So it comes about because I think it's my responsibility to fix the problem socially and to meet the other person 100% where they're at because that with that first message, you know, the, the, the problem is, is with me. So what that, what that leads to is constant suppression. I feel like talking, I'm, I've got all of these ideas I want to share, but it's not appropriate, so I'm constantly going to hold it in because it's my job to behave, it's my job to hold it in. Um, another word for that is masking. Um, it's transforming who I am into something that, that other people will accept as socially appropriate. So that's very different to being my authentic self. I can be a socially appropriate version of my authentic self, but if I'm constantly suppressing a key part of my personality, that's not being authentically myself. So um, a third common damaging message that's easy to internalize is that I must be really slow. I don't get it. I'm the one who's constantly trying to catch up to what everyone else is saying. Because if, if you're a verbal processor and you've been suppressing your urge to say things out loud, then just like I was talking about with my friend, um, it might be difficult to actually understand the information that's going on around you. So um, another type of processing is called uh, auditory processing. Auditory processing is where you listen to information, right? Someone is talking to you, you're listening to an audio book, there's an announcement over the PA system and you hear it and you understand what it means immediately. Um, what, what I've noticed uh, is often is common uh, with verbal processes is that sometimes it's accompanied by a delay in auditory processing, which means you might hear something and not immediately process and it doesn't immediately mean anything to you until a couple of seconds, sometimes even longer later, and then, oh, that's what that person was trying to tell me. So when you take away your natural form of processing, for example, interrupting someone as a form of listening, then it means that it's harder to understand the information that's going, that, that, that's coming at you in, in a form that, that is not your natural way of processing it. So this can uh, lead people to feel like I'm slow, I don't get it, I'm always the last one to understand and it's not because I'm actually slow or, or, or um, I can't understand, it's because my processing style isn't being met um, very well in this situation. So how can we understand this in a really positive way? Um, the, the positive way is to think that everyone has a different preference when it comes to understanding and processing information. Some people will read books and will read an entire book a week or a, sometimes even more than that. Just love, love reading, absorbing information um, via just looking at p text on a page. I can't do that. I when I put the time and effort and energy into reading, it takes a lot out of me. I personally am um, a, ver not verbal, um, auditory processor. I actually really love hearing things um, from audiobooks, from listening to, I, I get my computer to use text to speech software to, to say everything to me because that's the easiest way I can find to understand the information that, that, that is being delivered to me. So if we understand all of these things as, as a, an individual preference and, an, and some are easier for others, some are easier for you than others, then what it means is if you're a verbal processor, then you actually need to speak things out loud before they make sense. Um, and sometimes, um, I, I had someone tell me this the other day, sometimes 
you have to say it wrong before you realize that it's wrong. Um, I can definitely relate to this in terms of, of processing ideas. I get millions and millions of ideas. I'm not sure if that's an exaggeration. It might be, but it might not be all at once. And I really can't tell which ideas are good and which ideas are not good until I speak them out loud to someone else. And then as it's coming out of my mouth, I instantly realized that is a really dumb idea. How on earth did I think that was going to work? It, it made so much sense here. And then when I said it out loud, suddenly I could understand the information in a different way because I had verbalized it. And now I was processing the information in a different way. So uh, regardless of whether verbal processing is your number one uh, preferred style, most of us benefit from some uh, degree of di diversity in, in having multiple ways to process information. So I would suggest try it out, see how it feels to actually read something out loud. So if I'm reading something, I will read it out loud because it's easier for me to understand if I read it out loud and then I'm verbally processing it and auditorily processing it as well. It's a lot easier than just reading it off a page. So um, the, the, the three damaging messages were that I'm the problem, I'm messed up, I'm broken, there's something wrong with me. If you believe that, then it's easy to think that, well, it must be my responsibility to fix the situation, which can cause a huge amount of social anxiety. And if you are suppressing your natural um, information processing style, it's easy to feel like you're really slow and you're catching up and everyone else is understanding things around you because you've actually got a serious disadvantage there um, compared to someone who um, is processing in their natural style that, that, they, that they're used to. So uh, this video is all about un making a, a positive narrative around that. Verbal processing is just another way of processing and in the autistic community, it's, it's quite common, which means that if someone is telling you you talk too much or if someone is telling you to stop interrupting, you can tell them that this is how I process information. This, it's not something that's wrong with me. I'm not broken. This is my personality. If you don't like this personality, then we can find some other way of, of interacting with each other. And we're going to meet each other halfway because we are both valid in this situation. My, my information processing style is just as valid as everyone else's, even if it is not common. Even if I'm the only one in a hundred people who's a verbal processor, that is still just as valid. Just because you're the odd one out does not make you any less valid in the, the way your brain works and, and what, you, what you need. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video um, today. Uh, please leave us a comment um, if you are a, a verbal processor and what you do to um, manage, manage that in, in, in real life if people tell you you talk too much. Um, so I, I hope I've helped you to reclaim that identity as something positive. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.